set your watch back 60 million years. We're going into the Jurassics on the Jurassic. It was day four, and we were leaving Glenrock and heading south to search for the remains of much older Jurassic period dinosaurs. Highway 487 took us through the scenic Shirley Basin. The area has plenty of side roads, ideal for meandering exploration. It also has spectacular views. There's abundant wildlife, thousands of antelope, deer, and elk. It's worth taking your time and enjoying the drive, but there can be some road hazards. After about two hours, we arrived at our destination, Medicine Bow, Wyoming. Once a booming railroad town, time has passed it by. The Mondrian-inspired gas station fronts America's first transcontinental highway, the Lincoln Highway. Its bank handled the transactions of the ranchers and sheep herders who were shipping 2,000 head of cattle a day out of Medicine Bow by 1900 and 1,000 tons of wool. The only deposits it accepts today are bottles. There were still a few signs of business life in downtown Medicine Bow. But we weren't sure if a drive-in liquor store was such a good idea. Even the local funeral director appeared to have run out of customers. We visited some of his former clients. No doubt, some of the outlaws, ranchers, and saloon keepers that inspired Owen Wister to write the first Western novel, The Virginia, which was based on his experiences in Medicine Bow. When opened in 1911, the local hotel borrowed its name. It once was the largest hotel between Denver and Salt Lake City. The novel spawned several films and a TV series. This notoriety hasn't helped. The railroad lines used to run a few miles north, right through Como. There was a small depot in what is now barren ranch land. Two men who worked there stumbled on some large dinosaur bones in 1877. Shipping them to Professor Othniel Marsh at Yale's Peabody Museum triggered a dinosaur bone gold rush. Marsh and his rival, Professor Edward Drinker Cope of Philadelphia, were soon competing to uncover the world's first major dinosaur fossil site. Their competition, dubbed the Bone Wars, spurred them on to find and name hundreds of new species of dinosaurs. We were going to work at a dig site first excavated by one of Marsh's collectors, Fred Brown. And this is holy ground. Fred Brown found this site in 1879. And he dug it a little bit and got an Apatosaurus, Harvestegosaur, part of an Allosaur, but then he found a quarry over the hill that had 100 skeletons. So oh, he backfilled this. I'm interested because this is very late in the, in the Jurassic. This is the last river channel sandstone with lots of skeletons. Brown and others helped Marsh create Como Bluff's reputation as the richest fossil site in the world. Museums around the world clamored to display the finds from Como Bluff or launch their own quests at sites like the Dinosaur National Monument near Vernal, Utah. For nearly 70 years, it was believed that there wasn't anything significant left at Como Bluff, but recently, paleontologists like Dr. Bakker have shown that there are plenty of dinosaur bones still hidden here. The bones are so packed in here, you have to go pretty slowly. You will find it. it's almost too much bone. 
these are, would be the largest and were the largest land animals ever uh, in the history of the Earth. They're all the same type deal, huge, massive, 20-some tons, 70-some feet long, big guys. It was becoming clear that they'd found a part of an Apatosaurus. Best case, cross our fingers, we've got two vertebrae. And sauropod cervicals are a ball and socket, where the one side is ball, the other is socket, and they articulate like that. So if we're lucky, we're looking at two neck bones actually in articulation or in position as they would be in life. We've got a rib sticking here going off that direction. The hips are going that direction. It's just basically a section of the animal that's broken off. We don't have the whole animal articulated at all. But anytime you can get articulation like this, it just makes our job a lot easier. There was no doubt that this was still a valuable site for science, learning, and adventure. Week's been good. It's awful hard in this kind of environment not to learn something. I'm never going to look at the ground the same way again. Good people and great experience. Nice place. Everybody wants to find something. It's better than Christmas. I've always felt responsible. I mean, not just for the single great looking skeleton. And there's a story here. I'm going to make all of them speak. It was hard for everyone to leave. But we all felt that we'd be back someday.